and welcome to another painting session. I am sorry for the delay in putting this up. I'm trying to do once a week tutorials and sometimes it just doesn't work. <laughs> um, I recorded this one actually a while back and I couldn't, I couldn't get it edited. It's, we've been putting a new floor in the house, which is really exciting getting the garden and, and yard ready for winter and it's been busy. So um, I'm sure you guys know <laughs> as well, just the craziness that comes with changing the seasons. Anyway, what we're going to be working on today is this design. Um, we'll do three pumpkins and then thankful. The reason I'm redoing this too is actually a little bit of pride. And that's because I tried to do this lettering with my, my number six round brush and it just didn't, it, 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 it was, I don't love it. Um, so we are going to do, you could use this for a greeting card. I think that's what I ended up. No, I didn't. Um, you could frame it however you want. Postcard. So let's get started. I'm just going to set this off to the side. And the colors we're using today are from my autumn palette, which is over at the Maple Sapling Studio. These are all earth pigment watercolors here. We have an orange ochre, a yellow ochre, and a burnt umber. And then we also have an indigo blue, which is um, from the indigo plant, which is pretty cool. Uh, and so the indigo and the yellow ochre are what we'll be using for the green. So let's just get started right away. You might have guessed it. Yes, I am going to be using my number six round today. So I'll get some clean water on it and get to work with our orange ochre. And the first thing I'm going to do, I've got a little mark in the paper, so I'm going to make sure my pumpkin goes over that mark and kind of hides it. I'm just going to draw out, sketch out a pumpkin shape, sort of an oblongish circle. And then starting at the top middle, I'll do a little curved line and another here and same on the other side. All right, and if you can just let that sit for just the tiniest of moments, let it set a little bit and then clean off your brush and take a brush and just pull that paint inwards. And that'll maintain the line to an extent. There we go. Next, I'm gonna get a little tiny bit more of that orange ochre and just start dabbing it on. Cause I want this to be a very loose, like still a pumpkin shape, but like a, the pumpkin equivalent of a loose floral, <laughs> if that makes sense. So add these in, just following those lines. And you can pull it a little farther in if you need to. So this is a combination of the wet on dry technique and the wet on wet technique, both of which are very fun. Okay, so we are cleaning off the brush again and I'm gonna grab a little bit of this umber just to dab it at the top and bottom and give it some of that extra shading. And I apologize if you can hear like a little bit of humming in the background, that's that's the fan and that's to try to keep my baby napping while I record this video. It's like a theme of every time I make a video. All right, so I like how that's looking. If you want a little more definition on your pumpkin, I'm taking a palette knife. You could take um, a, a pencil, a, a charcoal pen, whatever you need to do. And I'm just going to take it along and follow those same lines. And it's important that you do this while the paint is still wet or it won't do anything. <laughs> All right. And once again, just add a tiny bit more of that umber, top and bottom. And then with the umber, I'm also gonna make the stem of this pumpkin. There. 
Next pumpkin that we'll do is going to be all umber. So we'll use the same, same technique. And you know, you can go ahead and play around with the placement. I am going to do it right here. I'm gonna make it a little smaller. Do my circle, my lines. Make sure your lines are dark enough or when you start pulling the paint, it's it's not gonna not gonna be as cool of an effect okay let that sit for just a few seconds and then take some clean water on your brush and pull it in there we go a little more umber for the top and the bottom and if you wanted to really pull the colors in together, you could add the tiniest bit of orange just to a couple spots. There we go, that looks nice. All right, and then add the stem. And I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. You can see it, but there's actually quite a bit of water on this. And I want this to dry just a bit before we do the scoring with the palette knife or it won't be as cool of an effect. So while I'm waiting for that to dry a bit, I'm gonna take my yellow ochre and do the third pumpkin. Same exact technique. Circle, lines. And let's see if this is dry enough. There we go. I feel like this extra bit really does add to the texture of your piece. And you can tell when you're looking at it, certainly. Okay. My brush is clean. I'm gonna add a little bit more of that umber top and bottom. And this is for shading, this is for contrast. Run it up and down the lines a little bit. There we go. Clean it off. And now we're ready to do this little yellow ochre. This is a little bit this can be a tricky one when you're working with a light color. It's hard to maintain that contrast. So I'm actually gonna pull in that orange a little bit already. And make sure we have some good shading to work with. Okay. Again, there's quite a bit of water on that one. So I will let that sit while we mix up our, our um, green. So here I have my indigo and my yellow ochre. I'll get my clean brush, whoops. I'll put some yellow ochre in the middle. And I already had some blue, some indigo. So I'll mix that up into a real nice green. And I'll take that green and make the vine. So just a little bit of curly Q vine wandering around. Little squiggles here. And if you wanted to add some leaves, gourd leaves are basically just like blobs, <laughs> like blobby blobs, <laughs> how you describe them. So that's what we're doing, blobby blobs. And everyone's gonna know what's a gourd leaf, so, cause they can see the pumpkin. So no need to get crazy about it. And this one is actually turning out so much better than that other one that I painted. So I'm glad that this is going to be 
the actual tutorial. I leave here. Okay. I should have said too, the paper is, oh my goodness, what is this paper? Um, let's see. It is a approximately four by five and three quarters, four and a half by five and three quarters. So it's quite small. So you could do this design bigger as well, of course. Let's get this scoring in. And I'm really going to be marking it up a bit more on this one. I want to get some of that ochre. Ochre in. Some of that burnt umber on the stem. Oops, wrong color. Ooh, that was exciting. All right, I'm mostly happy with this. Let me add a little bit of that darkness here. There we go. It's cute, it's subtle, I like it. So let's take, now if you wanted to stop, scan this in, <laughs> And you could just do a blank card like that. Um, I just picked up this calligraphy pen. I used to be into calligraphy and have not for years. So I will take this out. <laughs> and you can watch my feeble attempts <laughs> at calligraphy. And I'm just going to say thankful again. Because it's nice and generic and can, oops in many circumstances. I think I need to mix this up. It's very watery. One of the things I'd like to try eventually is making my own ink. I can do oils and watercolors, of course, now, but ink is next, oops, next thing. All right. Here we go. Careful so you don't smudge the painting if it's still wet as mine is. And this isn't using up the space well, so let's try thankful. Do I look like a first grader writing? <laughs> That's what I feel like. Like I'm just learning my letters and learning how to write. Especially with this funny calligraphy pen. I've never used one with like this angle before. There we go. How beautiful. So nice. Um, so there you have it. There is a very fun design to be working with. I hope you enjoyed it and I will hopefully get these tutorials up a little quicker once a week from now on. Um, thanks so much for joining in. See you soon.